So how did that happen, church? How did we go from not believing the gospel to being spirit-filled, gospel-believing people? Well, just like the disciples, our unbelief had to be dealt with. God had to do heart surgery and take away our stony heart and make us believe the gospel. And I'm so glad that God does not leave us to ourselves to put all the pieces together. God does not just leave us to figure this out for ourselves. I want you to see in this road to Emmaus how Christ reveals himself to these disciples and how he causes their hearts to understand and believe the good news. So, he's walking right alongside him. They don't recognize him. Look at verse 16. It's interesting because it says their eyes were restrained and so that they did not know him. So, this seems to be something supernatural. It seems like there's some way or other that God has ordained this moment where they can't recognize Jesus. There's some commentators who say maybe they were walking and they were sad, so they had their eyes down and they never looked up to pay attention to who it was. This is so much more than just physically recognizing Jesus. There's something different going on here. Mark 16, 12 says that he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. Some way or other, God withheld their ability to see Jesus clearly. And Jesus takes the opportunity to reveal himself, not in a physical way, but through the scriptures. He reveals himself through the written word of God. Look at verse 25. Once again, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And then look at verse 27. Beginning in Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. This is a great, great sermon preached on the road to Emmaus. So Jesus is teaching them that all prophecy and all scripture is a revelation of who he is and what God was doing in his son through the sacrifice of his son. The Bible's Christocentric. It's centered on the person and the work of Jesus. And I really wish that we had the specifics written down, don't you? If I could just see what, what scriptures Jesus went to and how he interpreted them, that'd be really helpful. You know, he went to the book of Isaiah and then he said this and then he went to Amos and he pointed out this. It'd be so useful. But God has not given us the specifics of what he said. And so it's up to you and I to search the scriptures, to to search for Christ in the written word of God.